Okay, so here we are, volume four of Adventurepreneur, and we're gonna be diving into a little bit of what we're gonna be working on next this time. So we're off to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia into our new apartment and the next big step of this entire process for us. So let's, uh, let's just dive right in. So, I guess this is, uh, we've made it to Malaysia. This is Adventure Penurialism, volume number four. All the reasons why you should, and a lot of reasons why you probably shouldn't. I wanted to drop in and talk about some of the major whys and why nots for being an entrepreneur. It looks glamorous, right? We're in new countries, we're doing beautiful things all the time, but there's a lot of downside to being your own boss. Now you might not think that was the case. You probably think, oh, working on my own behalf, but there's no one to really keep you in check other than yourself. There's no one to keep you in a routine other than yourself. When it comes to obstacles that you have to overcome, you're really left to do it all by yourself. That can be extremely inspiring, but can also be extremely degrading. There's often times when it's easier to go work for someone else. Depending on who you are, what you're good at, you might find, you might actually just like that. This is my job, I go home, I work from a nine to five, I get my weekends off. I never know what's coming next. I never know what I have to do to keep going, to continue that momentum. And that's probably one of the hardest things, is what happens next? So I guess, what's next? That kind of depends up to you. We've landed in our new home in Malaysia. So for those of you that were live with us last night, uh, we've actually moved to a new contract with a company. Now, sometimes taking a new opportunity, that's the best way to go. Sometimes that's, that's really the only way to go. You have to find out to see what's, what's, what you're capable of, what you like doing. So I decided I was gonna take a contract or an, a new opportunity with a company. Uh, so, moving here, right? Basically come to Malaysia, we started working with a company. You always wanna take opportunities. I think often what we'll do is we'll look at something We'll look at something and really try to decide, does it hold stability? Is it comfortable for us? And a lot of the times, I think we hold ourselves back from enjoying some of these new opportunities because we already have a lot of what we need. Now, this is a comfortable decision that a lot of old companies have made that actually end up to their failure. Now, one of the quotes from Gary Vee is basically, if you're not putting yourself out of business, someone's going to do it eventually. And often when we get comfortable and we get, and we're successful, we start to, get cushy in that feeling. We think, oh yeah, this is normal. It's just gonna keep continuing that way. But a lot of the times, at least in our age group, I'm around 31 years old, none of us have really gone through a big economic depression or anything that's really like a world war, right? So things have been kind of cushy and it gets dangerous at that point. But there's actually a lot of room for growth as an opportunist in these spaces as well because there's a lot of people that are comfortable and cushy and old money is realizing, or maybe at this point, I guess, old money isn't realizing the fact that a lot of their business models are about to be replaced. So as a nomadic entrepreneur, a lot of people don't realize that you don't really have to go work for someone else, but what you need to do is learn how to put your time and your energy on the line. Now, it's a great discussion to really get into because people just don't realize how much freedom they can create. Because one, you're gonna end up doing one or two things. You're either gonna trade your time for money or you're going to learn how to find more freedom with your time. Now I know that sounds abstract because everybody needs money, but I think more and more so as we get further into, I think the deflationary aspects of technology, it really gives you the opportunity to kind of do whatever you want, but you have to risk a lot to pursue the things that you love. You know, for instance, uh, if are you gonna work a, a, a full-time salary job that pays $100,000 and you hate working in a cubicle? Or would you be happy taking $60,000 a year doing something that you actually love? And for most people, myself included, I'm significantly more interested in actually just pursuing what makes me happy. And not just happy, but it fulfills purpose in life as well. I think often we overlook the deep regard for things that are purposeful in our life and think to ourselves, oh, you know, if I, if I just had like a car or a money or the bank account, I could fly here and I could do that. But it doesn't really solve. It never solves the problems. Anything that you're going to run into as a person, and myself included, we're always learning and growing to try to really increase our awareness and appreciation of the things that we already have. 
I've had this conversation with a friend a few times last a while, but when I was last in the jungle, I absolutely love, I, I know this is an abstract thing, I love the way the ants sound. Now, the ants sound? What do you mean? The ants in Costa Rica, they eat, they're called woodcutters. They, they chew around and they eat all the leaves and the plants. And I was walking just a few days before I left to enter this urban jungle away from my plant jungle. And I stopped for probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes. And the sound of the ants actually, they made me cry. Like, oh wait, you're gonna cry because of the sound of the ants? And this is something you can never buy. You can't buy the level of appreciation of the, of the way things smell. Uh, of the deliciousness to, of flavors, or the sound, and in this particular case, of the ants eating the leaves. Your appreciation for what it is that you already have is the choice that you make. We often complain, oh, I'm being held down by this system or that system and I need a living wage. People don't realize what's right in front of them. You don't, you don't need to take a job at McDonald's. What you need to do is find a way to produce what makes you feel like you have value and purpose in your life, and often from that you'll wildly exceed the capability in your dreams. So what is next as an entrepreneur? It's one of the hardest, it's one of the hardest parts. It's one of the th reasons why I suggest most people don't do it, is because you are now in charge of what happens next. And your ability to fulfill your own ambitions, to fulfill your own desires, and to dream further and further each time, that's up to you. Nobody can solve that for you. And that's... That's really what it comes down to. So this has been Entrepreneurialism Vlog 4. We're going to be diving into Vlog 5, Volume 5 next time and taking a look at some of the uh, next things the Arcane Bear has on the plate. Uh, again, remember, if you're new to this content, thank you for joining us. This is T.O. Give us those thumbs up as well. If you enjoy this, smash that subscribe button and hit that little bell. That way, anytime we go live or produce content, you guys will be notified. Remember, again, this is massively about an increase of the value, appreciation of things that you already have, being grateful, being humble. I'm not the best at the, the latter of those, but we do our best. We're all often failing at striving for perfection. Hold on, scrap that. We are all failing at perfection, but we all need help and inspiration from one another. So I hope that this is what we can provide for each other as we build and grow. This is Tio with the Arcane Bear signing off for the rest of the day.